We're at a depth of 828 meters. Our temperature is 4.7 degrees, and we are off the coast of the northeastern United States, diving in Hydrographer Canyon on the east wall. And we're at a transition zone here along the slope. Um, to the left, there's large uh, rock blocks and more of a soft sediment slope. see the little pinules on each individual uh, tentacle. So this does appear to be the white morph of Paragorgia. Anthothela hanging underneath the ledge. A few cup corals. Squat lobster on the top. So we're trying to get a good image here of what appears to be Lophelia pertusa. So what do we think? Is this Lophelia? Oh great, orange morph of Lophelia pertusa. We've had a strong current all day coming from the, the uh, south, southeast. A lot of particulate matter in the water column, or we call it marine snow. Now you can see two eyes, and it's changed its, uh, it looks like it's changed again. Yeah, maybe octopus. Yeah, that's what we were just talking Here, right? about. It looks like it's hatched uh, in the 10 minutes that we've been here. It does look now like it's actually peering out of the egg case. Right. It's a little bit, yeah. That's true. I see some other zoanthids just to the lower right. More eggs in there? Yeah, on the left-hand side, you can get more eggs. It may be interesting for listeners to know that for the octocorals anyway, the color may be created by pigments that are in the tissue or pigments that are in the microskeletal elements or both. Right, and the skeletal elements that Scott's talking about are called glarites. They're made out of calcium carbonate in most cases. That's a terrific image. You'll also notice along the branch that the polyps are kind of hanging downwards. Uh, that's typical of a lot of uh, primnoids, the way they peek out of their scale of armor. Uh, we're in Hydrographer Canyon. We are predominantly looking for uh, deep sea coral communities, sponge communities, and all of the associates. That cup coral right there is different. Do you see that, guys? Can we get a zoom in on that red and white cup coral above the shrimp? Yeah, but what you do see is no colonization on it compared to the, you know. Right, this is a relatively recent event. Yeah. So this, Peter asked a question earlier about what could, what could, what natural event could make uh, corals go away and, and regrowth. This is not, could this be a case of something like that, something falls down and knocks things off? Video on stream three is great right now. Um, either eggs, or possibly internally fertilized eggs, but more likely eggs. What about surface brooding? I, do some of these corals brood on the surface and also uh, brood larvae on the surface of the colonies? Soft corals can be brooders, but I, they, they, they're probably encapsulated by tissue. I, I think they would probably be a bit vulnerable, just stuck on the surface. That's a huge one. Estimate maybe two and a half meters wide, meter, meter and a half tall.
We're off the coast of the northeastern United States in the U.S. Canyons uh, area. We are currently at a depth of 1046 meters. Um, we are diving with the remotely operated vehicle, uh, the Deep Discoverer, or the D2. Uh, we are headed to a bottom depth of about 1100 meters, um, the base of a steep scarp. We will explore, discover, hopefully, deep water coral communities and other benthic organisms. We are in Atlantis Canyon right now, um, surveying a depth of about 1030 meters. And we have been surveying this, this vertical rock wall all day, uh, documenting coral communities and other benthic fauna. Tim, it almost looks like, you know, on the hard corals, the dead patches are a result of that they're starting to trap sediment and that's suffocating, suffocating them out. Yeah, you do really see sediment on top of them, don't you? Yeah. On that rock face. Mm -hmm. You see two Swiftia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see the breathing movement opening and closing. In terms of the branching, Scott, at the nodes and internodes of these bamboo corals, is that still a fairly um, good morphological character for uh, genus level differences? Differentiation <laughs> is more complex than just that branching pattern. Exactly. But right now, that is accurate. Chronoisis yes. branches at the internodes, Achenella, Isodella branch at the nodes. Yeah, that was a very small bamboo coral. Several sponges here, cup corals as we're zooming out. Uh, our depth here is 1029 meters. Local time is 1240. And we're moving along this wall to waypoint four. Currently, we are off the coast of the northeastern United States in Atlantis Canyon, surveying the continental slope. Yeah, bridge, I'd like to request another ship move. 50 meters at 335 degrees, 0 0.1 knot. That's some interesting geology there. Yeah. Something fell off. There's another good lesson about patchiness here. It'd be interesting if we hadn't landed where we did, we would think there were almost no corals at all here. That's right. Did you notice how the siphon turned up? Yeah. That's closing up. I learn something new every day. We have an amazing uh, group of scientists on shore that are working with us in the chat room and, and on the phone. And um, I'm very appreciative to have all of them here online with us. And that's the great thing about this telepresence cruise is that we can really engage multiple scientists in real time. I would say that's a uh, um, Alaskan bivalve, so something more like a scallop, not a brachiopod. Okay. What is a good defining characteristic of the brachiopods? Well, so you don't see lophophorite arms, you see those uh, tentacles coming out of the mantle edge, um, that's pretty typical for scallops. And it also looks like the mantle edge is fused there, another characteristic of, uh, of bivalve mollusks. It's been a fantastic dive though today. Um, we've been in the water since launched at 8.30 this morning. And, and just to remind folks, we came out across this wall with several coral species. And a lot of sponges today too, a lot of high sponge diversity.